First of all, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for taking time to come out and show support and love and encouragement to the family of Miss Ann Holmes Blackman. Thank you for all those that are showing your love for each one of us. I want to tell you, family, each and every one, you are loved, you are being prayed for, and I know God's got you. And I know as the mother hen as Miss Ann was to so many, not only yourselves, but also to many others, the mama hen she was, she would be very appreciative of all those that are taking time and effort to show love for her family. She loved her family dearly. Would you please join me for a moment of prayer? Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you mighty throne today with Lord praise, honor, and thanksgiving. Thank you, dear Lord, for what you are doing and what you are going to do. I want to praise you, dear Lord, for the life of Miss Ann. I want to thank you, dear God, for the blessing she was to so many. Lord, thank you for her tenacity, for her fight, for her will to survive and will to keep going. Thank you, Lord God, for the example in those regards that she had set for not only her family, but all those that were around her. Father, I pray that you would please bless the family, each and every one. Anoint them, O oh God, by your mighty grace. Give them strength to stand. As Psalm 34 makes the mention, Lord, bands of angels are encamped around about them to deliver them from all of their troubles. 
And Lord, I thank you for that. I thank you for your always there. You're never too busy to take our call or to listen at any hour of the day or night. Father, we trust in you today. I ask that first of all, you would be glorified. And Lord, if there's somebody under the sound of my voice that don't know you as their Lord and Savior, I feel sure that would be one of the best requests Miss Ann would make is to know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. So we will have a wonderful family reunion together one glorious day. God, we honor you and bring you praise for it all. For ask these things in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ our Lord. And we all say together, please.
You know, today, if I want to give you the best that I possibly can about me saying, I can tell you of one word that really sums it up a whole lot for me, and that's tenacity. You say, why in the world would you say something like that? She was one of the strongest, skinniest fighters I had ever seen in my life. She had a will to live and a will to go on and a will to get better if any way possible. I remember seeing and meeting her when a lot of times we thought pretty much gone. Thought there's no way she's going to pull out of this. But yet what happened? By the divine grace of Almighty God, the prayers of the righteous, God blessed and touched that precious little lady. And I'd be doggone if she didn't click right out of there and get to go to the home place or go back to the, if you would, over there to the uh, Smithfield over our manor. You know what? I think to myself, what a fire. And she would look at me and tell me a lot of times, she'd get down on herself a little bit. And she'd get to feeling poor and bad. And she felt like she just couldn't make it sometimes. But then she'd look around and say, you know, God's being good to me. And he really has. Not only to her, but to all of us. And that's one thing that stands out in my mind is her fight and will to live. She tickled me good when she was able to come to church on occasion. It was a great blessing to see her fight and get out of there and actually come to church. And it seemed like she enjoyed herself so much. Uh, last time she was there, she was with her walker. And she's still moving on. There's a lot of people that walk up right on two feet and can't make it to church. Can somebody say amen on that? I can't. Because I'm telling you what, there's a lot of folks that don't have that drive or desire to even try. But by the grace of God, she pulled down deep and she said, I want to go. And not only did she want to go, she also wanted to live it to the nines. As what Miss Sarah and I talked just a little bit earlier, she wanted to look right. And if some of you folks were at Lee's Chapel for the past few times, you'd hear, heard about a young lady called Miss Margaret. I won't give you her last name. Come to find out, she's 100 years old. Miss Margaret was one that made the mention. She said, and I told the ladies at church, and they didn't appreciate it too much, I don't think, but uh, told ladies at church, she said, well, it's a sorry lady that cannot put on lipstick and a good-looking hairdo for their man. I didn't hear many amens. You know, there were a lot of amens on that. But she really liked it, and she believed it. Her at 100 years of age, she tickled me to death. And that reminded me so much of Miss Anna. She wanted to look good. She liked looking good. She loved like my mother did of what Miss Sarah said about Hamrick. She was a blessing to so many. And you know, those are things that we remember because one, I can't surmise an entire life of 79 years in about a 10, 15 minute block once I get started. Can't do it. You can't either. We can't give them justice. All those things that they have done and the blessings of life they had given. Because we think to ourselves, you know, how are we going to, if you would just summarize everybody's life. Why don't you try it sometime? Summarize your life within about 10 minutes. And tell everything about you and all the accomplishments, all your blessings, all the heartache, all the ups, all the downs, all the in-betweens, the fighting through, the blessing. You tell it in about five or ten minutes. We can't touch it. Because there's precious memories there that only you cradle and hold in your heart. And you'll remember that little smirk of smile. You'll remember that happiness and joy she would have in her heart. You would remember the little way she used to do things or say things. Or like Miss Sarah said, when she would gather her hammock cart plumb full of clothes and said, you've got to come here and help me put these on and pick them out. You know, these are things of traits that you'll remember of the quality of a young lady that loved to look good and wanted to be, if you would, nice looking. She loved her Thursday baths or Thursday showers she would get. She loved that when I'd go in on Thursday a lot of times and I'd go in afterwards, about lunchtime or a little bit afterward, so she could get that done. And she would love it genuinely. I said, do you feel better now? She said, oh, man. She said, I feel good. I said, wonderful. What a blessing that is. A blessing to know to have a little bit of freshening up. And you know, when you think about what God had given of a person of fight, she's went through with her lifetime a lot of good times. And she's had a lot of hard times. But she didn't give up. She didn't quit. She didn't stop. She didn't roll over and play dead. She kept going. 
too much in our life. We have people today that want to stop at the least little thing. They don't want to go on no more. If you want to talk about work ethic, you're talking about a foreign language to most folks because they have no idea what it is. She knew about work ethic, and she also knew how to use it. There's a lot of folks that do not. And I am so thankful she had a good work ethic, a good standing strong, and the way she lived for her Lord and for her family. She loved each of them. We would talk extensively about her family every time I went. Last Thursday, well, if you would, time before that, she wasn't talking too much. But then last Thursday when I talked to her, she was talking very well, looking at me eyeball to eyeball, turning around in her bed and looking and talking and conversing with me like I'm talking to you. And I thought, praise God, what a great blessing indeed to get to have her to, to talk and to go and do. She loved herself she, uh, being nice and neat, and she loved her family beyond all measure. You know, and I asked Miss Sarah and others, you know, do you have a word or something you'd like to say? Because, you know, I wasn't around Miss Ann in early years, but I know many of you were. And you saw a lot of things in her, and a lot of traits in her, and a lot of, if you would, a lot of special memories in time. Miss Sarah wrote down a little bit, and I would like to read that for her, if I may, to describe, if you would, her sister. It says, My dearest sister, I've never known life without you. You are a part of my very first memories. You were always there with a smile and willing to do whatever I needed. And that included giving mama and daddy a gentle nudge to let me do certain things that they otherwise would have said flat no to. I'll never forget the day trips to White Lake with those burnt hot dogs that all the Stanleys love and that fried chicken and your homemade potato salad and those deviled eggs. And then one Friday night, you took a real big chance and carried me to Green's Jewelers and got my ears pierced. It says, which did not make mom and daddy too happy when they found out the next day. We never had fights or arguments, but we were always there to support each other. You were there for me when I got married. You stood in as my grandma, helping with my boys, and we must have ridden a hundred times to take them to pediatrician visits in Wilson, but you were always there. Says, when my world suddenly collapsed when Wayne was taken sick, you were with me every step of the way. You stayed with me night after night, sleeping in chairs at Duke Hospital. Uh, we spent many hours together in the hospital during your sicknesses over the years, and we always knew we were there for each other. You, love, you have loved my children and grandchildren endlessly, and they love you the same. You have endured much suffering over the past year, but now you have won your battle. What a courageous warrior you have been, and you fought with such grace and dignity. My prayer is to be a fraction of the person you have been. I have no idea how to live in this world without you, but I will give it the very best, just as you always have done. I love you more than words can say, and we'll see you one time again, another time again, one day. Truthfully, what a great blessing. When you have a sister and you've got family that give you such blessings as that and treat you as that way, those are gifts that only God could give, and now the torch has been passed. It's passed on to her family, to Karen, to Susan, grandchildren, passed on to Sarah, passed on to Leo, passed on to Linwood, that you would carry and continue to raise that standard and to keep that flag going. People say, well, once they're gone, they're gone. No, they live forevermore within your heart, your mind, and you get to hear it. This may sound plumb strange to you, but it'll, it's a Rodney thing. Mom and Dad always had wisdom and advice all the time. A lot of country hick wisdom and advice that a lot of people don't understand but me sometimes. But I knew what they were talking about. Miss Ann had great wisdom, and she had knowledge about several different things. And the most important was one about her Lord. She loved her Lord. She knew he took care of her. She had no doubt in her mind. She knew that when everything was upside down, God was able to turn it around. I said, you do know he is able. She said, oh, yes. 
With God, all things are possible. I said, yes, ma'am, that's exactly right. With God, all things are possible. And people say, look, why do you, or how do you get to that point that you have that confidence once you know the Master? He knows your voice, too. And you know His. And you can hear Him. And He gives you that sweet comforter, the Holy Ghost of God, that lives and dwells with inside of you as it did her. And I am so thankful for the blessing that she gave, the encouragement she would give, and asking about everybody else when I came to see her. She wanted to know how everybody else was doing. How's this one doing? How's that one doing? How's this one doing? What you doing at the church now? What are they doing over there? What's going on here? And yet all the time, something about wanting to know how other people are doing. When she herself needed to have all the prayers that could be sent her way. What a blessing of an individual that loved God, loved her family, loved her church family, and loved her community. She loved them dearly. So I am grateful to be able to say before you, if a eulogy could be given, she would be given one of the greatest awards that ever was, as many others before her, that loved selflessly those of her family and her new grand grandbaby. What a precious blessing to her. You know, and her grandchildren, she loved them dearly. And she would speak of them all the time. You know, and when she would do those things, I love hearing her talk. That was a wonderful blessing to me. So don't think she forgot you. Don't think that she didn't remember and know things about you. She had a good memory, and she had a good mind. And she understood the shape she was in, and she understood the blessing of having those that love her. So I want you to take heart today. I don't come to you with sadness nor a sorrowful story. I come to you with good news. She knew Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. And by God's divine amazing grace, I've read in the Holy Word of God, and I can back it up by it, where it tells me that there is coming a day that we shall see them again. All the dead in Christ shall rise first. That's the Word of God. And then those who remain will be called up together to meet him in the air. And maybe you ask me that question and say, but Rodney, how do we know them? Will we ever know them again? The word of God tells us plainly, as Brother Paul makes mention, you will know as you are known. I believe in all my heart we'll know each other. I believe with all my heart. But there's one that will hold our attention most importantly. And that is seeing our Lord and our Savior and our Heavenly Father. Lord, what a day. You talk about NASCAR having fun. Look for that little man running around the throne of God. That's going to be me. I'll be making laps, turning the turns, banking the corners. Because I'm telling you what a time it is for God's children to get home. And to be able to have no more pain, no more suffering, no more heartache, no more sorrow. Family, hold your head high. No without a shadow of a doubt. You've got a woman of dignity, of love, that care for her family, that care for her community. And that loved those that came and said anything to her or tried to help her. Very appreciative. Oh, and love for Westerns pretty good. <laughs> so family, you hold tight. God's good. And it's not the end. It's not over. We're not through. We're just a step closer.
don't believe I ever heard that song before, and I tell you what, that's a beautiful song. Thank you so much. You know what, as I come before you today, I, I pray fervently and ask, you know, what can I do to give my very best for Miss Ann because of what she has done for me and the blessings she has given me? And you know, I, I often think that before every time I get up and attempt to do a funeral or a message, I do every time before a message, pray, God give me the very words, let me speak to your children what you would have them to say. At this point, place, and time, it is a very important thing to say to you what I believe God has given and laid upon my heart. It's not just that you have somebody that calls himself a preacher to come up and to speak a few words and then go on their way. I think to myself about the grace and the love and the mercy of a loving God. That would love an old sinner just like me. And save an old sinner just like me. And I know with all my heart that death is one of those enemies that I know will be destroyed. If you read the book of Revelation, the last chapter will tell you the last enemy to be destroyed is death. Why is that? I think you're saving the best for last. I think you're finally getting rid of something that has tore your heart out so many times that has beat you up left and right. One glorious day, death will have no power over a child of God. One glorious day. I fight for that day. I have no siblings left. I have no parents left. I have no grandparents left. I'm the baby of the group. And they're all gone on this old side of the world. But I'm here to tell you, by God's grace, I press on knowing that one glorious day, I'm going to see them again. And nobody but nobody is going to hold me back. I've got that promise. How do I have that promise? Through the written word of God. Well, whatever do you mean, Rodney? Let me tell you a little story real quick, and I'll hit on a few points. Ain't going to take no more than two and a half, three hours. No, I'm just kidding. Hold on. Hold on. Don't throw me out. Get on my ear. As I look over in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7 through 8, it makes mention, I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day. And not to me only, not to me only, but unto all of them also that love his appearing. Now church, I'm telling you, fought a good fight, finish the faith. Would you please go with me, throne of grace and prayer, as we ask his blessing over the word. So Heavenly Father, come before you, throne. Lord, I pray, give me the very words you want me to speak to the children of God that are here. I pray you minister to the family the way you see fit. Let your word be able to speak and do what needs to be done. Father, I know it will not return void. Your word is strong and it is true. And it is not curved from me nor anyone else. It is what it is. Father, I pray, help let me, dear God, be the voice of God to your children and give them the matter that is needed from your word. And God, I will, we will return praise, honor, and glory to you. And if there's some under the sound of my voice that does not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, let today be the day that they put everything where it needs to be because that's their choice, not mine. Father, I honor you, praise you, uplift you, and glorify you for asking humbly in the beautiful name of Jesus. And we say together, please. Amen. Amen. Now, when you're talking about this, I fought a good fight. Again, I think about Miss Ann. I told you before, and I made mention about how that when she would fight so hard, everybody in the family, the doctors, and those coming up would say, it's not looking good. Miss <coughs> Tammy was even there on occasion. I remember when it was looking really bad. And she said, I'm telling you what, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. And I, I thought, Lord have mercy, what in the world? Go inside and there you see she's barely clinging on. Bear to clean up. They carry her out in a sheet. Pick the sheet up and carry her out to get her out there to the ambulance, to the wedding ambulance. Put her on the sheet. Men and women, when you're down that low in the valley and you think that you've had enough about all you can handle and you think you can't make it another day, this young lady right here with all her power, all her reserve, remembered her family, remembered her children, remembered her grandchildren, remembered that she was a child of God and that God don't give up on her. You're saying, Rodney, whatever do you mean? You see, I'm kind of like it, but though. I am a lot like that. Because there's one thing about it. I'd rather just go ahead and sandpaper a bobcat than I had to sit back and think that I can't make it. I'm going to make it. I'm going to push forward, and I'm going to do the best I can. Why? You tell me I cannot? Let me tell you a little secret. That just fired my rocket and gets me up a little bit stronger. You're saying, whatever you mean, preacher. Like I said, I'm a country preacher. So it might not be fine language for a lot of folks, but I'm going to try to break it up or down, put your knees to be. 
When I think about this, I think of the tenacity. I think of the will. I think of the willpower. I think of the love. I think of the strength that she demonstrated not just one time, not just half of the time, but all the time that I saw. And when she was over there at the Living Center, she told me about the love she had for her family, the love she had for her children, her grandchildren, her church family. She told me about that great love she had. She said, I just love to see them. Said it feels so good. Or call them. When they called me on the phone, said I just, it just tickled me to death to be able to hear them on the phone. These things she knew would give her fire, give her energy, and give her power to keep pushing on. What about you today, church? You folks that are here today have fought many battles. You've been in many low points in your life. Isn't it wonderful to know that you've got somebody that would might call you or encourage you or lift you up or pray for you or talk to you that would give you strength to go on when you're ready to say, I'm done, I'm through, I can take it no longer. Right? She gave me that strength a lot of times. I go over and see her try to lift her up and she lift me up on a second. And I said, well... I went to go give a blessing and she gave me a blessing. He said, what in the world are you talking about? When I looked at her and her roommate, Miss Sally Bailey, and how did her and Miss Sally fought so hard just to make it one day, and then I got tickled, she says, Miss Sally talks all the time. <laughs> she said, she needs to take care of her visitors and I'll take care of my visitors. <laughs> and I said, I understand, I understand. I don't know where it come from, but she was ready to tell me that's what it's going to be like. And uh, Miss Sally is so loving and kind and compassionate, and we just adopted her too and loving her up all over. You know, and she loved, loved Miss Ann. And when she was gone, and I told her when I come back to see her, she'd say, boy, she said, I'm so glad I got my room back back. She said, I sure miss her and I love her. You know, and when you have that kind of love of a person, not even blood related, but loves them and cares for them, it gives you the ability of the power to keep going on when you want to quit. And I know that everybody in here has been at some point, some place in their life, they've been ready to lay it down and give up and think they can't go no more. I believe with all of my heart that the God that created you did not create you for anything other but the best. Now what you give that's your choice. You say, well, Rodney, what do you mean? Some people you can't motivate with a stick of dynamite. And the church said, amen. Thank you. Some you can't motivate with a stick of dynamite. Then some others, you just mentioned something needs to be done. Boom, they're Johnny on the spot. They're right there ready. And when you have people of that nature, like she was in talking to me and telling me, Rodney, you know, I pray for my family. I pray for all the children. I pray for the grandchildren. I pray now for the great grandchild. And said, I'm praying for our families and our church families. I'm asking God to bless them and to strengthen them. She was a prayer warrior. She might not have been able to leave the room, but she sure prayed hard. And she prayed for a lot of people. She said, I can't do anything. And Miss Sally echoed that comment. Said, now I can't even hardly get out of the bed, but I sure can pray. And I said, that's the most powerful weapon in the world. If you'll pray. Over in the book of Job, I want you to listen. Job chapter 19, verse 25 through 27. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, Job says, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worm destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. Whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold him, and not another, though my reins be consumed within me. Job was a man. You think he was tried? Y'all know the story? Let me tell you a little something. Mr. Job lost his family. He lost his home. He lost his land. He lost all of his cattle and livestock. His wife was a good wife to him and said, Tell you what, won't you just curse God and die? Really encouraged. That happened that a lot. Then he got his best friends coming and hung around him, seven of them. Got over and talked to him a little bit and said for a while, didn't say nothing. And finally his best friend looked at him and told him, you might have done something wrong, buddy. Why don't you just go ahead and confess it and go ahead and get it over with? He just looked down and shook his head. Knowing he hadn't done anything wrong. What happened to him? Do you know the very beginning of the story? Satan come walking in the presence of God one day. God said, have you... Consider my servant Job. Said he's a perfect man that is sheweth evil. Then Satan told God himself, huh, 
says, touch him. He'll curse you to your face. God said, all he has is yours. But on him, you cannot touch. Job went through the ringer. This girl went through the ringer. She's had a lot that she went through, a lot of hard times, a lot of circumstances, a lot of sickness. She's had a hard time. But the thing about it is she did not give up. She set a standard for us and for her family to let them see, don't you quit. Don't you stop. Don't you ever turn tail and run. We fight facing our enemies, not running away from them. And that's what she did. She followed him headlong. You know, why, do you, why would you have a little baby hen have that much fight within her? You want me to tell you why? Maybe you don't know who her brother is, her big brother. Let me introduce you to it. See, his name's Jesus. You ever heard of him? God's only begotten son, her Lord and her Savior. Ain't you thinking about that? What a mighty God we serve. And you think that he can do something. Let me tell you a little further. I know with all of my heart, hearts are breaking, people's minds are churning, you're getting tired, maybe getting hot, maybe getting a little <coughs> rustic in the room here, but maybe it's a sauna for you, but it might be just for me, but it's getting mighty warm. <laughs> but I'm telling you, with all of my heart, there's one thing about it, we got something to get excited about. When you lose your fire, when you lose your tenacity to fight, when you lose your self-will to keep going, you become worthless to yourself and to pretty much anybody else around you. She didn't lose that. I looked at her Thursday when she had her arms up on the pillow and she had her legs as they were propped. And she had her hands, they were all swollen and bruised, bloody. I walked in and I said, Miss Ann, who have you been fighting before I got here? And she laughed. She said, Nobody. I said, have you fell from the bed? She said, no. No. Not that I know of. I said, Lord, honey, you've been fighting somebody, it looks like. And she still asked, she said, no. And I looked at him little arms. Men and women, it's just like in her little arms. All I saw was a precious little bone covered with skin. Precious little bone covered with skin. Her muscle tone was pretty much gone. You say, well, Rodney, what does that have to do with anything? Everything. You've heard the old adage, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. Have you heard that? Well, let me tell you, it's true. If you don't use what God's given you, if you don't use the blessings and the mercy and the wisdom and the guidance and the encouragement, that's why church is a great blessing. When you get to the house of God, you come to a place of like-minded people or a place where you can find solace and love for you. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you've been. I don't care what your ethnic group is. It don't matter to me what you claim. It all don't matter. The point is, I'm to show the love of God if I'm to be a man of God. A little secret. I saw on a little bit of a, a clip from one of my friends talk about the church house and said people just don't want to go to church like they used to. And one of my friends clicked on there and he said, and I'm one of them. I don't want to go. And that broke my heart. It broke my heart. Why do you say such a thing as that, Rodney? Because let me tell you, when you get to God's house, I don't know how it is at your church, but come test us out at Lee's Chapel, and I'll tell you how it is. When you get to the house of God, you should be able to feel like you can figuratively take off your shoes, you can relax, you can enjoy yourself, and worship God in two ways. What ways is that, Rodney? In spirit and in truth. And when you get there, I want you to feel free to praise Him with all your heart. Well, somebody might say something. <laughs> now, you'll hear one preacher sits on the front row that hollers a lot. Kind of bald-headed. Looks something like me. You'll see another one that gets up in the choir and raises his hand and praises God a lot. That shouts a lot. That will run or take a fit or jump straight up and down. Why is such a thing as that? It's not of any show that I want to put on. It's not of any thing to give any man glory or to bring any attention to myself. I can't contain what God's done for me. 
that he would love an old sinner like me. And he'd forgive me. And he'll forgive you. He loves you that much. Like Miss Ann, she loved her family. She was ready to do anything she could for him. Mr. Leo, so many times, she would mention his sickness that Leo's been going through. He'd been a sick fellow. And he'd been suffering hard, and she knew that. Like I told him, she wanted him to feel better. Little precious Emma, she wanted her to be healthy. Inside of that living facility was a lot of germs, was a lot of sickness, and she knew that. She said, but they love me, they're praying for me, and I love them. She had no doubt in her mind. And she did not. That mama hen now coming out saying, I did not want them to have to come visit me inside of here because of all the sickness. Now, is that a selfless love or what? A selfless love that would say above her own desire or want that she truthfully wanted to share that love. She knew and she does know through the word of God she knew about how that God would save her. God would resurrect her. God would give her a new life, a new body. She knew that. Why did she know that? Because she knew Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. Last but not least, I want to give you something. Got a little cheat note. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4, verse 13 through 16 makes a mention of this. It says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as those which have no hope. No hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Don't stir y'all up none. Come on, brother. I tell you what, I believe I could pull y'all through any muddy ball you want to go through with the hallelujah Jesus he's given me. And why do you say that? Because I'm telling you, one glorious day I'll see my loved ones again. Death can't hold them down. Rodney, that's just not even so. Well, I've got to tell you this before we go. Oh, that's right, please. I've got to tell you one thing before we go. Do you remember the story of Lazarus? <coughs> Very good story of Lazarus. Do you remember what happened? Lord, Mary Martha, short one, condense it, make it quick. Mary Martha said, he's been dead for four days. If you would have been here, you could have touched him and he would not have died. Mary and Martha told Jesus. He said, yes. This is done that God will be glorified. He told them to roll the stone away and those that were naysayers around about them just looked at him. Man, he's been in there four days. This man is stinking. He said, roll the stone away. And the shortest verse in the Bible that everybody wants to memorize in Sunday school is which one? Jesus wept. Jesus cried. I believe it because of their unbelief in him. He'd been with them so long they still didn't believe. But yet, but yet, but yet, when he came up there, he said a prayer to the Heavenly Father and was thanking him that he heard him always. But because of these that are around, he said it again and he prayed to him openly. And once he did, he cried out one man, one man, Lazarus, come forth. I can only imagine the quiet that was there because everybody said, bless his heart. He missed him so bad. God bless him. You know, he, he's really sad. And then they started hearing something. And then all of a sudden they saw something. Come waddling at an old tomb. Wrapped up in grave clothes from the tip of his toes to the top of his head. They couldn't even do nothing but waddle out of that tomb. And when he come out of that tomb, Jesus said, loose him and set him free. Do you think people started believing a little bit? Come on. Do you think they started believing just a little bit? Do you think somebody actually started saying, there must be something to this Jesus? 
You say, Lord, that can't happen. I've said it before. I'm going to tell you again with all of my heart and all of my mind. I know without a shadow of a doubt, if it is God's will and he seen fit, he can do the exact same thing for Miss Ann right here today. You say, Rodney, you have lost it. No, I've not. I believe with all my heart, my God is able. If he can call a dead man four days dead in a tomb, he can surely take care of Miss Ann or anybody else. And all he's got to do is speak the word. Well, good news, make it fast forward. Soon and very soon, Jesus is going to come again. Amen. And when he comes again, he's going to call all his children. When he steps out, God tells him, go get my children. When he steps out, that trumpet shall sound. All the dead in Christ are going to rise. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together to meet him in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And then I love the part where he said, God himself said that I will be their God. I will dwell with them. And I shall wipe every tear from their eyes. What kind of love is that? We just tasted a little of it through Miss Ann. Again, she loved her family. She loved her community. She loved her church. Men and ladies, let's do all we can. As she's passed the torch on to her family, so you carry it. You carry it. You carry it. Carry that on with that torch. Show the love of God to those that were in need. And show them that God is love. And if they come to know him, they'll find that love and they'll find don't care where you come from. Don't care about your bank account. Don't care about your car. Don't care about anything about that. Or your clothes you're wearing. Or the watch you got on. Or the ring you got on. Or about your necklace. Don't bother me a bit. It ain't about that. It's all about him. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Hmm. Are you ready? Are you ready? You better be. Because when we are ready, everything will be well with your soul. It was with her. It is with her. Everything was right and ready. Now, the ball's in your court. What you want to do with it, your choice. I know what I can say. Miss Ann, honey, I'll see you later. I'll see you a little bit later, honey. And you won't be by some bedside where you can't move either. I'll be able to run with you on the streets of glory. And so can you, if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you don't, confess your sin. Ask him to come to your heart. He'll take you just as you are. Then you'll be able to see Jesus and you'll be able to see Miss Ann running those streets of glory too. If you would, let's pray once more. Most kind and gracious Father, I want to thank you, Lord, for the little message given. I want to thank you for the crowd, the folks that are here today. Thank you for the family, Lord. Let them know they are loved. They are being prayed for. And by your grace, there is a great standard set before them to show and demonstrate love to their family. And, Lord, I pray that we continue as Miss Ann has started and has been given of the love of a mother hen to her family, her siblings, as well as her children, grandchildren. Lord, I pray, great-grandchild, let them demonstrate and see the love of God. Let them carry it forward. And let us always keep the torch burning. For soon, very soon, Jesus is coming. And we are looking, watching, and waiting. And we are ready. We ask it humbly. In the beautiful name of Jesus Christ. We all say together, please. Amen.
Amen.
the service. If you would like to speak to the family, you're welcome to go this way. If not, you can go right out to the back.